Okay, guys, I'm um, sorry to keep you waiting. I know we were supposed to get the show on the road here some time ago, but we were waiting on a few people, and I wanted to um, afford them the opportunity to kind of get here, so I'm sorry for, um, for prolonging your day any longer than it has to, but uh, we'll go ahead and jump right on into this and get it started. Okay, I am Christopher Franklin. I am co-founder of Harmony Village 100, along with my brother here, David Franklin. So what we're trying to do with Harmony Village 100 is we're trying to get all of the people that we know, all of our friends, family, relatives, everybody in our general locale, we're trying to give them the opportunity to invest in some of the different agricultural projects that we're currently invested in Africa right now. So when David and I were there, we seen a lot of things, witnessed a lot of things, learned a ton. And um, we want all of you guys to be afforded that same opportunity. So that is one of the driving factors in why we're doing what we're doing. So basically, just to give you a little bit of background on David and myself, we're brothers, obviously. I think everybody here, well, not everybody here, but most of the people here know that. We have a couple people there in the back. Um, me and Dave, we're brothers. We come from a family of 10, um, five boys and five girls. And David and I, we are the two that kind of meshed as far as business is concerned. We've been business partners for over 20 years now. We've had several different business ventures. We've had anywhere thing from a dry cleaners to a cleaning service to landscaping services to a club. Uh, we've done it all together, so um, I think we mesh well. Uh, one disclosure that I want to make is that um, we are not financial advisors. This is by no means advice in the way of finances. All this is is us relaying to you our findings, giving you the opportunity to partner with us on this business venture that um, we're undertaking right now. So um, let's get right into it. We are Harmony Village 100. And at Harmony Village 100, we empower individuals to foster collaborative thinking, to drive collective investing by simplifying the understanding and investment management. By using the latest technology and techniques, our promise is to help individuals grow and expand their portfolio funds with hands-off approach and maximize returns not recognized in this country before. So, what does all of that mean? Um, in a nutshell, we have partnered with several companies in Africa, and um, collectively, we would like to allow you guys to partner with us. So why we say collectively is because the companies whom we partner with have set a minimum. And, and to be quite candid and, and frank, the minimum that was set for us was $35,000 USD. So anyone here who wishes to partner with us, we're not making a minimum of $35,000. The minimum here is only going to be $5,500. But we have um, reasons that we've set the minimums to be 5500 And we can get into that later. But right now, as I mentioned, as far as collectively, we'll all pool our resources together. And you guys will invest in Harmony Village as we invest with our partners in Africa. And the reason that we have to do it this way, because they're are several protocols in place that kind of will not allow the individual to um, invest alone. You can, but you would it will be um, an investor certificate required, and that's not too simple to obtain. What we did, we obtained this investor certificate last time we were there, and it involved um, a business plan to be presented. It involved financials, five-year projections, it involved um, profit and loss statements. It involved income statements and balance sheets. So it's a, it's a pretty intricate process to get your investor certificate 
which will allow you then at that point to buy land, to buy real estate, to go into any business endeavors that you want. So this is why we have come to you so you can get into this vehicle, so to speak, through us, through a partnership. Okay. So what we have learned in all of our research, we have learned that um, there are, are, are outdated services. And what we mean by outdated services, the 401k plan here in the United States is the number one investment vehicles for working individuals, for the blue collar men and women here. The 401k plan is the number one investment vehicle. And um, the problem with that is they're not getting any returns. You're not getting great returns. Let's say you're getting some returns, but you're not getting great returns as it relates to the 401k plan. And for this reason, we believe that um, we have number two, unsettled customers. And when we say unsettled customers, we're saying this from the perspective of we have seen a 20% increase in investment inquiries. And what an investment inquiry is, is when a person is not totally um, happy with where his money is parked or where his money is invested, he tend to look around. He'll call maybe Charles Schwab. He may call Merrill Lynch. He may um, even use what we, what we all use. A lot of people, Robin Hood, E-Trade, things like that. But when people use those different types of outlets, they are um, generating what's called an inquiry. So a lot of companies, they post these inquiries. They make it public record. We had this many inquiries in com this year in comparison to this many investment inquiries last year. So what we've seen is a 20% increase in investment inquiries. And when we see a 20% increase in investment inquiries over one year, which is unprecedented, that lets us know that people are not happy with where their money is parked at that present time. They are, they are looking for alternatives. So that was a problem. A third problem we see was the um, returns. The returns were averaging 6 to 10%. While last year, the stock market averaged 21.4% return. So why are we only getting 6%, 7% returns? Why aren't we getting the full 21% return? Well, that's simple because your stock broker or, or your financial analyst or whoever you have um, allocating your funds around, they're not all-knowing. They are just um, they're, they're, they're doing some guesswork, some educated guesswork, but nonetheless, they're not perfect. So out of that 21% that the market did, that the market did go up, um, they were only able to get you 6%, 7%, 8%. And let's keep in mind that if you get a 10%, 12% return, that's a, that's a great return, you know? So that was a problem we seen in the um, area of the returns. And another problem is the cost and fees. So the loss of potential income by not maximizing to fees is huge. So, I mean, let's face it. There's fees in any kind of investment that we do. Um, however, people don't like to outright disclose fees. You might have to do a little bit of dig and see the fine print to see what the fees are. But nonetheless, the fees are huge. And there, when I say huge, I, I'll, I'll speak in the words of Tony Robbins. So Tony Robbins said that, and this is backed up by data, that the average return that's lost from a 401k plan throughout the life of that plan, so we're talking about 30 years, is 35%. Do you hear me? 35%. That's huge. So basically, if you had $1 million in your 401k plan after you retired, 300,000 of that was eaten up in fees. You should have $1.3 million. And, and how that number is so large, I mean, it's, that's hard to believe, but how that number is so large is because we are denying that 1%, whatever it is that they charge, if it's only 1%, we are denying that 1% of um, funding 
a chance to have capital gains. If it's 1% turned to 2%, turned to 4%, to 8%, to 16%, I mean, the capital gains, how capital gains work is phenomenal. Your, your money multiplies exponentially through um, compounding, compounding interest. I'm sorry, not capital gains, compounding interest. So if you deny 1% of your money, the opportunity to grow through compounding interest, uh, you're doing yourself a, a world of hurt. So that was the fourth. And the fifth is usability. So usability is a problem. The reason why we say that is because everything is, is hard to read out here. If you're not an a expert trader, a pro, you don't know how to read candlesticks. You don't know how to read the ticker that zooms across the TV. You don't know how to read um, all these different symbols that, that you need to be able to read in the stock market or investing in general today. If you don't know what a candlestick means, uh, you, I mean, you're kind of lost. So the reason that the 401k plan is so successful is because it's just simple. And that's why we're trying to model our business after something like that. We, we don't want the, the fees, which we don't have, but we want the simplicity. We want you to be able to invest your money, sit back, get your quarterly reports from us, and then just enjoy your returns. That's it. So we have some solutions to all of these. We're going to um, close the gap on the returns. We have phenomenal returns on our project, and you'll see that on the second half of the um, presentation. We have zero fees. So there's no way that that 1% fee that they're charging can snowball here. We have absolutely zero fees. Whatever you contribute is what you have invested that's working on your behalf. Our target audience is novice investors. You need to have zero experience. Obviously, if you're not a novice investor, you can come on and partner with us as well. But we want to see novice investors come aboard. We want to see people that don't even know how to turn on a computer. We want to see your grandmother come on board because what we offer is, is totally hands-free. You don't need to know anything about technology and you'll succeed partnering with us. Cost savings. The cost savings goes back to zero fees. So if there's zero fees, you got more of your money working for you, you're saving and easy to use. We just talked about that hands-off, easy to use tech. We'll handle all the tech. Uh, you guys just sit back and enjoy the ride. Okay, so a product overview. Our product has unique returns. And when I say unique, I'm talking about you don't you won't see any returns that I'm going to show you momentarily with these significant um, gains ever in this market. Okay? And our product is first to market. And the reason it's first to market is because it's insured. You know, I'm going to say that again. It's insured. Have you ever heard of an investment being insured? I mean, if you put your money into the stock market or, or into wherever you put it at, if the market goes up, your money's going to go up. If the market goes down, your money's going to go down. Here, that's not the case. It's insured. So you have nowhere to go but up. Okay, um, authentic. Design is authentic. With the help and input of investors, experts in the field, and expatriates living in Africa. So there's a lot of people that have went to Africa to invest. Not only to invest, but to, um, to build homes, to move there, to start businesses. And when we were in Africa, we communicated with all these people. I mean, we, com we communicated with all the expatriates. We communicated with... CEOs, COOs, we communicated with um, everybody you can think of in regards to good investments, um, what we should invest in, where we should invest, what areas, the products. So we just got gained a wealth of knowledge by um, taking the trip that we took. Okay, so the benefits of our product is simple again. Again, it's simple. It's easy to use with trustworthy administrators. Uh, we'll have quick customer service assistance from myself and from David. Um, the ability to interact with like-minded individuals and never before seen returns. 
And what we mean with that, with as far as the ability to interact with like-minded individuals, everybody sitting up here, a lot of you guys know each other. It's a couple in the back there. I, I don't know you two gentlemen or, or you couple right here, but we're all like-minded individuals. So I would urge you guys, even if you would like to exchange numbers, talk about this thing, but um, this is a community which we're trying to form. Not only is it Harmony Village 100 for investing, this is an investment movement, a community. So you have the option to communicate with like-minded individuals, whereas if you give your money to a stock broker, your money is gone or it's uh, making money. You, there's really not a platform for you to communicate with other individuals that's on the same level as you or that's investing in the same products as you. So I think that will be a good opportunity for you guys. So our business model. So we based our research on market trends and agricultural output of crops from Africa, specifically Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. Abstract, we believe people need new instruments, new tools to help them grow their funds sooner rather than later. And that's the key word, sooner rather than later. I mean, that's, that's huge, that's big. That's the whole thing in a nutshell is what we're getting at here. Um, as you'll notice, here coming up in the second uh, portion, when we say sooner rather than later, we only have three packages. We have 1.5 year package, 2.5 year package, and the 3.5 year package. So 36 months, well, 42 months is three and a half years. That's the longest we do. We'll have one and a half years, which is 18 months. If you want to just get in, make a quick buck, get out, we have that option too. That's not the best option was recommended, but nonetheless, it's there. The design, we have a minimalist design, hands-off approach, and um, simple to use. Okay, so we'll talk about the market overview. So as you'll see, you'll see to the left, $50,000. So this was David's initial investment of $50,000. He invested this in 2020. And he spread it over three different companies and he had 100% success on every level. So basically meaning that um, he put his money with the company. They gave him a contract. They told him what his output would be, what his return would be. And, and that's what it was. And the original contract that he made is still going. Well, or I should say the original contracts because this was spread over three independent companies. But what David did see was that one of the companies, after he um, signed on with them, shortly after too, they contacted him and let him know that he would not be able to reinvest because that was his main interest, was reinvesting. So um, when they contacted him, letting him know that he, wasn't, he wouldn't be able to reinvest, the reason for that was that a, a big Chinese firm came and dumped hundreds of millions of dollars into their laps. And they, you know, they were in no need of any small investors at that point. You know, they had their hands full. So, but nonetheless, they fulfilled all of their contractual obligations and, and, and they left it there. So that was, I don't want to call it a hiccup, but that was one that he was not able to get back into, but they did fulfill their end of the bargain. And that was 50,000. So now this is David and I current investment. We're in the process of sending them $250,000 each, which will be finished before July 1. And this $250,000 is going to be spread over. I'm sorry. Yeah. $250,000 each will be spread over the same three companies that David originally experienced the, um, the 100% satisfaction with. You move over here to the 1M. We're trying to get $1 million. And that's $500,000 to go with the 500 that we are already in the process of investing. And no pressure, we expect this 500,000 to come from you guys. So, and when we say you guys, we're not talking about um, you 
guys specifically. We're talking about you guys plus the 300 plus people that we're communicating with every day through our inboxes and emails and phone calls and things of that nature. So we're really quite busy right now. But by the end of 2022, we expect to have $1 million invested into the African market at that point. You move on over 10 million, this is our opportunity to build. And we expect to have 10 million invested by the end of 2023. And we're calling this our, our fully inclusive market. I wouldn't, I don't, I kind of want to change that. I don't want to call it fully inclusive because we're only including Southeast Michigan is going to be our target along with the people that are getting wind of this, that live far and near. Everybody is included in this, but this is going to be our target. Our target market will be Southeast Michigan and our target will be $10 million invested on the continent of Africa by the end of 2023. So a recap here, we have $500,000 in the process of working and we are putting it with the same company that David put his with two years ago um, and, and, and it was already tested for a surety. We're looking to have 1 million by the end of this year and 10 million by the end of next year invested in the continent of Africa. So May 2022, our growth strategy. This is where we are now. We're rolling out the product to local individuals to help establish the product to our friends and family. This is what we're doing tonight. So you guys are all part of this initial rollout. May 2023, next year, we're calling that our soft launch. We're going to um, roll that out as we just spoke about to Southeast Michigan. And then December 2023, we're going to expand the availability and we're going to do a global launch. So that's going to be huge. We're going to do a total revamping of the website. We're going to have the um, proper RIAs behind us. We're going to just have a whole bunch of staff that's going to be required to even do a global launch because you can just imagine how overwhelming that'll be um, if you don't have the right people in place. So we're totally preparing for that and we're looking forward to it. So again, our two-year action plan tonight, this is our friends and family that we're rolling out the product to here in May. Go around the corner, 2023 May is going to be our soft launch where we're gearing it to Southeast Michigan. And if you go to the end of 2023, December or either January 2024, we're going into our global launch. So our competition. Obviously, if we're taking on an endeavor of this size, we had to do a lot of research into our competition. And surprisingly, there's several companies out there who are doing exactly what we're doing in the way of agricultural investing. A lot of them are agricultural investing in America, but several of them were agricultural investments in Africa, just like we're doing. So... In comparing these companies, we could only we only put five of them down and we refer to them as A, B, C, D, and E. For obvious reasons, this video will be published and we don't want any um, defamation lawsuits or anything like that. So we'll refer to these companies as A, B, C, D, and E for now. So company A was more expensive. We've seen those hidden fees and we've seen all the small print. Company B and C. The products was expensive and inconvenient to use. Products D and E, they were affordable, but they were still inconvenient to use. A lot of candlesticks, a lot of graphs, charts, even ticker symbols. And, and that just doesn't sit well with the masses. Okay? So the team. You already met me. You already met my brother, David. I am the chief executive officer. David is the chief operating officer. And I wanted to address something um, kind of now because earlier on, uh, it was maybe a couple days ago when I had did a um, presentation and someone asked me, well, you told me that this was, um, was David's baby. You know, David started all this. It was all his idea and everything, which is true. So why are you? taking on the role of CEO. And, and, it, and I, it, was, it was just simple. I told them that from a CEO to a COO, it's really 
I don't want to say it's no status to where one isn't higher than the other because normally the CEO is, but in this case, we're equals. We know our strong suit, so we moved forward knowing that. I know what my strong suit is. I'm sorry. I know what my strong suit is. My strong suit is computers. My strong suit is talking to people. My strong suit is handling business. My strong suit is technology. Dave's strong suits. Dave's strong suits is handling direct business. His strong suits are is getting in front of the customers. His strong suit is negotiating. He is an operator. So David is moving to the continent in November. That's a bold move. I, I, I applaud you, Dave. That's a bold move to be actually moving to the continent. So David is going to be our boots on the ground. He's going to be looking out for the best interest of you guys. He'll be able to go to these companies, look into the windows, talk to people, negotiate things. He'll be right there um, as, a, as a representative. So that's, I think it works great. So you'll see these other two spots that we have here with no images. The first is Francis Kabayaija. He is an um, intermediary that we have in Africa. The second is Alex Tweezy Makiza. Alex is a communication liaison for us. They're, they both serve in the intermediary capacity. Um, what we found while we were there, it's a huge language barrier. Although a lot of people know English, it's also a lot of people that don't know English. For a long time in, in Rwanda where we went, their second language was French. As of recently, they turned their second language over to English. So now it's mandatory that kids in school learn it and, and they're offering a lot of different courses in regards to learning English. But Francis and Alex, they are very instrumental in what we do. They sat around the tables during our negotiations. They were there with us literally every day from morning to night, um, interacting with us, introducing us to people, taking us places, showing us the, uh, the, the, the surroundings, what to expect, what not to expect, giving us good pointers. Because we all know if you're not from a certain place, you just don't have the wherewithal. You can't place certain things if, 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 if that makes any sense. Um, you may be thinking one thing as far as investments, and they can put a whole perspective on you that you never even considered because you're not even from the region in general. So um, Alex and Francis were absolutely instrumental in, um, in our endeavor, and we appreciate those guys. Um, and, and now that we're back, they're still um, working. And, and, and when I say they're working, I'll give you a scenario. David, I think it was on um, Tuesday. David was on the computer. He was doing e-banking. He called me. He said, hey, can you get into your account? I said, yeah, I can get into my account just fine. He said, well, they're telling me that I need to walk into the branch. And obviously, you can't just walk into the branch 11, 12,000 miles away. So what David did, David called Alex. Hey, Alex, I need you to go into the branch. Oh, I, I left out that we have powers of attorney over there. Alex and Francis, their power of attorneys of ours, they are uh, limited powers of attorney, obviously not durable, but nonetheless, they can transact minor um, transactions for us. So back to what I was saying, David called Alex and told Alex, hey, uh, my, my account is locked and they're telling me I need to go into the branch. Can you go in and see what's going on. So anyway, to make a long story short, I know everybody has to get out of here and I can be long-winded sometimes, but Alex went into the branch and whatever he did, Dave got an email um, about two hours later with the link in it. He clicked the link and he was able to open up his account. And, the, and something as simple as that is, is imperative that we have the capability to do because we're here. So if, if your account is locked up and you have to go into the branch, what do you do? You can't just hop a plane and go. So this is us. This is why we're in the roles that we're in. And that's it. So <clears throat> at Harmony Village, we believe in giving 100% of ourselves by closing the loop on investment management and using the latest technology as we help individuals grow and expand their portfolio funds. 
We thrive because of our market knowledge and a great team behind our product. Okay, so now that is beyond the end of the first half. So, like I said, that was our vision. That was our goal. That was where we intend to take this company over the next couple of years. So, if you guys want to climb aboard, we welcome you. And I think we can all take this thing to a whole nother level together. So, what I'll do right now is I'll... Um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead straight, since we started late, I'll go straight into the other part of the presentation. And this is where it'll get interesting because now we're talking directly about your money. And I know this is what um, most of you came for, although you don't want to say it like that, but I already know that's what it was. Okay, give me one second here. So we'll start off right from the website. Okay, so opening the world to new ideas. So first off, we'll start with global partnerships. So we partner with agricultural businesses on the continent of Africa, specifically Rwanda, Uganda, and Tanzania. We offer individuals from all over the globe who don't have the same economic reach as we do with the opportunity to partner with our company. Okay, so we're definitely passionate about what we do. That's the main driving force for why we're here today to give all of you guys the opportunity to get involved. So before I continue, I want you guys to um, listen to this quick three minute excerpt. In about three minutes, I'm going to attempt to excuse me. We're all about here at Harmony Village 100. First off, my name is Christopher Franklin. I'm the co-founder of this company, along with my brother, David Franklin. And what we have done over the last few years is a ton of research involving one topic. And the topic is, what is the best financial strategy that we can use to grow our resources, not only quickly, but with the minimal amount of risk? That's what we're all about. And I'm going to tell you more about that now. I know I said three minutes and I'm gonna hold myself to that, but I have to give you a little backstory. So about five years ago, we were hearing all these stories about how the economy in Africa was just exploding with all these minimum risk agricultural opportunities. You know, we were just hearing this from all different types of sources. So, I mean, back then, we couldn't imagine doing any business with Africa. It just seemed like it was too far. It was just an unattainable goal to set. So we just never really got into it until now. And I mean, not to mention, doing business in Michigan was all we knew. All the businesses that we ever owned in the past were all done in Michigan. So after racking our brains for about two years, thinking about I wonder what it's like to um, do business in Africa, just becoming wealthy in Africa. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. After all these years of just banter and internal talk, David just got up and said, you know what? I'm going. I'm like, what you mean you're going? It's just not that simple. You can't just get up and go to Africa. Man, he shocked everybody when he booked this ticket and he was on his way to Africa. So once David returned home, he had began proclaiming to me about what he had seen, what he had witnessed, how great everything was, how he's just making money hand over fist. And I'm talking about, I just listened to this for like a year. So I'm like, oh, I'm starting to get antsy internally now. Like, I, I need to see what's going on. So I looked at some contracts he had and, and man, it was all there in black and white. I said, man, I'm getting up. I'm going. I have to go and see what this is all about. So that's what I did. I ended up getting up, booking me a plane. Me and Dave, we went back together. So as soon as our feet hit the soil, just like David had been talking about all that year, the opportunities just began to unfold. One, two, three. They were all there. I started looking over some of his paperwork, and I was floored. 
So needless to say, I'm knee deep in it now, and we've made a business out of this. So like I said at the beginning, I was going to keep it to three minutes. I'm going to tell you now in a nutshell what Harmony Village 100 is all about. It's all very simple. We wish to bridge the gap between our people here and around the globe with the untapped opportunities that await us in Africa. Since we already have all of the partnerships established, the certifications, and the documentation that's required on that continent, we're all set and ready to go. So all it's going to take now is for you to partner with Harmony Village 100 as we partner with Africa. And then we'll all benefit more so than we have ever benefited before. So take a few minutes, look around the website, and if this sounds like something that you may be interested in, contact us for more details. Okay, okay. So we'll get right into this here. Um, let's see. So let's um let's talk about a few of the uh, products that we are currently invested in. So first we'll talk about chili peppers, where we source our um, chili peppers from the eastern province of Rwanda. And one of the main reasons that we chose chili peppers because we have um, tons of different crops that we could have chose to invest in. Uh, and when I say tons, I'm talking about tons of crops. We have maize, we have beans, we have potatoes, we have cassava. Uh, I mean, and the list goes on and on. But we strategically chose the three um, crops, chili peppers, honey, and garlic for, for specific reasons. So I'll, I'll read a little excerpt here. The chili pepper has high demand in supermarkets, hotels, restaurants, and homes. It is also used in the manufacturing of medical products. The Rondin chili is also exported to UK, Holland, France, and Belgium and to neighboring countries. The country exports of chili stands at 21 tons per annum. So this is one of the main reasons that we decided to invest in chili. As we know, it seems that every country on the continent loves hot stuff, you know, starting with India, continuing to Mexico, to the U.S., to Africa itself. Everybody likes chili, chili pepper. So there are several different kinds of heat produced from the different peppers. So, I mean, you have the serrano pepper, the habanero pepper, ghost pepper, aji pepper, all kinds of peppers, but the chili pepper is one of the most affordable. That's why it has staying power. That is one of the reasons why we chose to invest in the chili pepper because it is one of the main components in all of the hot things you taste, whether it's from a, a, a spice or, or a liquid. It, it's, it's probably some chili pepper in there. So if you look on the index, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think chili pepper spice comes second in the kitchen, second to only pepper. And if we could have found some pepper to invest in, we may have found some peppercorns. I mean, we, we may have invested in that, but uh, we didn't find any pepper. So needless to say that chili peppers are, are, are going to be around. They have staying power. Everybody eats chili peppers. Whether they know it or not, if you like any heat in your food, you're probably eating chili peppers. Okay, so that's one of our products. Another of our products is the garlic. Okay, we get the garlic from Uganda. So our garlic is sourced from Uganda, and I'll read this um, first paragraph here. Garlic is grown from individual cloves. Each clove will produce one plant with a single bulb. This may in turn contain up to 20 cloves. Growing garlic is therefore self-sustaining. In Uganda, it is traditional to plant on the shortest day of the year. Whether this is symbolic or practical reasons is unclear. One can eat garlic fresh out of the ground, 
but if stored, it must be cured first. So garlic. I don't know about you, but every time I'm in the kitchen cooking, and I'm a, I'm a pretty good cook, I end up using garlic. And I'm talking about garlic is in everybody's kitchen across the globe, so that it seems. I mean, all of our research suggests that garlic is everywhere, and it is as important as chili peppers. So this was another driving factor to why we chose garlic. Uh, we had, we had, like I said, we had a lot of choices to choose on what to invest in, and we sat down and we thought about this for a long time. We talked to a lot of people before we made these choices, and garlic and chili peppers won out over everything so far. So uh, here's a couple pictures. You see us in the garlic factory, but this here, this is not the garlic plant in which we invested. The reason that we put these clips in here is because this guy runs his garlic plant so so nicely it's like uh, i can see i can see a vision there he had some equipment that he had on order that was going to be used for processing the garlic whether it be garlic powder minced garlic i don't know exactly how he was going to process it i do know one of the ways was going to be powder but his establishment was up and coming. And um, when we talked to this guy right here, his name is um, Martin. Martin is the, uh, he's by trade, he's a pharmacist. And it, it seems like he knows this stuff and he's doing a phenomenal job. So that's why I kind of put these clips in here. And um, you'll see, I quote it at the, underneath the video. We have chosen to invest in garlic in Uganda because we saw a huge growth potential, but we are, but we also have our sights set on Rondon garlic for 2023. We were thoroughly impressed, impressed with Martin and his facility as shown. So this is Martin's facility, and um, we're going to be in communications with Martin pretty soon. There's Dave there doing a tour of Martin's facility. Um, and lastly, honey. So... We source our honey from Rhonda. Rhonda has the best honey. They have the uh, equatorial uh, tropical forest and, and they just produce an awesome tasting honey. We actually uh, purchased samples before we invested and we wanted to bring some back, but unfortunately the um, sample that we bought were not really just sample, they were like um, one pound containers and then after all the other trinkets that we were bringing back they just never made it back but um, we'll talk about honey for a second so honey in 2020 and this was huge honey in 2020 for the first time surpassed sugar as the number one preferred sweetener sugar has never been surpassed by anybody, by aspartame, by stevia, by sweet and low, nothing ever. So in 2020 was the first year that honey, I'm sorry, that sugar was taken down by honey as the most preferred sweetener. So, it, it, and again, we used a lot of discernment when it came to picking what we were going to invest in. And honey, as you can see, it's, in, it's, it's everywhere. It's in everybody's kitchen once again, like, like the chili peppers, like the garlic. Honey is right there on the top of the list. Uh, I, I don't see honey going anywhere. I think honey is a safe bet. So this was another reason that we um, chose the honey. And um, this here is the company that Dave invested with originally that we're investing with now. These are Dave's actual beehives. These are his actual beehives that are out in the apiary. Um, this, as you can see, are, are, are beehives that are not ready to go yet, but once they are cultivated, once the queen bee is put in there and they're put out in the fields, then they'll start producing as well. So the honey was, um, <clears throat> that was another um, no-brainer for us. So, before we proceed, I have one 
last video that I want you to watch, and I'm sorry I'm kind of prolonging getting to the meat and potatoes of why you all are here and the different packages that we offer, but I promise you it's coming up next. So let's just enjoy this video first, see what we seen, and then we'll proceed. In the recent decade, the number of opportunities to invest in domestic sustainable agriculture has increased considerably. Food consumption would surge in the medium term, owing to Africa's rising income levels and strong population growth rate, offering new chances for agricultural investment and growth. Because Africa is the only continent that has yet to experience a green revolution, the pressure for Africa's food production to meet demand will necessitate massive investment to maintain food security. Small uh, scale. I'm going to stop this for one second. He just said that Africa was one of the last, was the last country that hasn't experienced the Green Revolution. And I know I have um, sat through this video a couple of times and he does not explain to what the Green Revolution is. So just real quick, what the Green Revolution is, is when a country goes from everything manual to basically automate it. Not really automate it, but I'll explain. So in Africa, what you will see is you'll see the men and you'll see the women tending these lands. You'll see them manually cultivating these lands with pickaxes, whatever tools that they have to cultivate. They're manually throwing seeds. Um, they're, they're relying on the rains, obviously, for the irrigation. Uh, everything is manual. It's like um, way back in the past. It's, they're not up to date yet. They're not using fertilizers, uh, minimal pesticides. Everything is organic, which is better. But they are sacrificing quantity by not hitting that green revolution yet. So what the green revolution is, is when you bring in the tractor trailers, the, 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 the gas powered plows, diesel powered the um, irrigation systems, you start um, employing the fertilizers, the pesticides, the chemicals, which uh, are not always good, but they're necessary. So um, once you come up to speed with all of that, then you'll see your yields increase. Whereas while you're doing it like you're doing it now, everything manual, minimal fertilizers, minimal pesticides and things like that, you might get, say, 10 tons of potatoes. But once you're able to automate things, so to speak, once you start using these different fertilizers, you may get 20 tons of um, potatoes. So the Green Revolution is necessary if you want to come up into the 20th century and start making money selling. So Africa has yet to experience that Green Revolution like every other country has on the planet. But once they do experience that, oh man, it's um, it's going. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna continue now. Farm currently account for over 60% of Africa's population, with agriculture accounting for over 23% of the continent's gross domestic output. Despite this, much of Africa's agricultural potential has yet to be realized. Agriculture, according to experts, is a low-risk investment that keeps up with inflation and grows in value over time. There are many reasons why you should consider investing in agriculture in Africa as this industry is set to create many dollar millionaires in the coming years. Welcome back to our channel. Our video today will present 10 reasons why investment opportunities in the agriculture sector in Africa will make more millionaires. Before we start with our list, make sure to like this video and also subscribe to our channel for more exciting topics about trends and business opportunities in Africa. So without further ado, here are 10 reasons why investment opportunities in agriculture in Africa will create more millionaires in the coming years. 1. Future African billionaires will be farmers. It seems far-fetched to think that 4 to 5 years after graduating from high school, one could achieve tenable financial goals through agriculture. After college, the ideal situation would be to have a white-collar career caring for sick patients or defending clients in court. Farming looks to be the last resort for those with no other options. Yet, the Green Revolution appears to have passed as the agricultural business has made significant progress. 
However, this once ignored vocation is now a highly sustainable treasure trove. When asked where the next crop of African multimillionaires will emerge from, Dr. Akinmumi Adesina, president of the African Development Bank, stated unequivocally that the next generation of African billionaires will be farmers. According to Dr. Akinmumi Adesina, the food and agricultural sector will be worth $1 trillion by 2030. So if you're looking for a way to generate money, this is the place to be. 2. Projected increase in food demand for current trends. By 2050, the amount of food produced will only be adequate to feed half of the world's population, based on present patterns. According to the United Nations, our world will grow by 2 billion people in the next three decades, necessitating a 70% increase in agricultural production. If oil, utilities, or water needed to grow by 70%, investors would flock to stocks and funds in those industries. Because this isn't happening in the sustainable agriculture industries, opportunistic investors can profit. These trends can be turned around, and Africa is a great place to start. Because of Africa's rising purchasing power and fast urbanization, food consumption is expected to skyrocket in the next years, presenting new agricultural growth potential. In a nutshell, people will always need to eat, and both animals and crops contribute to the world food supply. As the world's population grows, so does the demand for sustainable agriculture. Agriculture is a commodity that is mostly recession-proof because of the constant demand for food. This tendency is a wonderful opportunity for investment in agriculture because the demand for food will always be needed in the future. 3. Big Market for Food Processing and Logistics Industry Farmers in numerous remote villages in Africa lose more than half of their product every year, according to a recent UN food report, not owing to a lack of care, but due to the poor status of their transportation infrastructure, which makes it impossible to go to market hubs. According to estimates, up to 50% of fruits and vegetables, 40% of roots and tubers, and 20% of cereals, legumes, and pulses cultivated in sub-Saharan Africa are lost before reaching a market. Africa will be able to feed itself with expert knowledge, skill, and innovation in the food preservation industry. The current situation presents a significant investment opportunity in the food processing industry, which can process the large number of harvests that are thrown away. There are also chances for transport and logistics companies to assist in the transfer of food from rural to urban areas. 4. Investment Opportunities in Agriculture Technologies the Netherlands has the 17th largest economy in the world. It has a population of 17.4 million people and a land area of 41,543 square kilometers, which is somewhat less than Rwanda's population. Despite this, it is the world's second greatest exporter of food. In the midst of all of this, this country is the world's second largest food provider. The Netherlands exported agricultural products worth about $92 billion in 2017, and they were able to accomplish so by focusing relentlessly on developing new technology that would allow them to achieve higher yields with fewer inputs. In the Netherlands, for example, several farms produce more than 20 tons of potatoes per acre, compared to the global average of 9 tons per acre. Between the years 2003 and 2014, Modern manufacturing technology has resulted in a 28% increase in vegetable yields, a 6% reduction in energy use, and a 29% reduction in fertilizer usage. This shows that agricultural technology outperforms a significant reliance on the landmass. In most parts of Africa, agriculture currently lacks the necessary technologies, with most farmers performing their tasks by hand. Consider the advantages of investing in contemporary agricultural technologies and the significant benefits that will result, especially because this industry is mostly untapped. 5. Africa has the potential to feed the entire world. Africa contains 60 to 65% of uncultivated arable land and 10% of the world's renewable freshwater resources. Meanwhile, in the last 30 years, its agricultural output has climbed by 160%. The Democratic Republic of the Congo alone, according to some estimates, could feed 2 billion people. Food and agricultural products will be in ever-increasing demand as the world's population continues to expand, approaching 10 billion by 2050. 
Africa, like China, which dominates the global manufacturing industry, has the resources to feed the world for the foreseeable future. This is a compelling argument to consider investing in African agriculture, as all indications are that the sector has a bright future. 6. Africa remains the only continent yet to experience green revolution. During the green revolution, the yield of global agriculture rose dramatically as a result of recent advances in research technology. During this time, new chemical fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides were manufactured. The Green Revolution is thought to have spared up to 1 billion people from starvation. Many African countries have focused heavily on natural resources such as oil, gold, and diamonds in recent decades, neglecting their agricultural potential at a time when many countries were expected to benefit from the Green Revolution. Africa must stage its own version of the Green Revolution if it wants to save its people from starvation. 7. Investment in agriculture can be more sustainable than the stock market. Investing in agriculture entails purchasing a physical plot of land. This property's worth is only going to rise. Agriculture, unlike equities and businesses, is often a long-term investment. Returns vary depending on a variety of factors, including the amount and rate of land depreciation, as well as the farm's location, current commodity prices, and other considerations. Returns on investment for commodity-based land range from 3 to 5% whereas returns on investment for speciality, crops range from 10 to 15 percent. Agriculture investments can be set up to be kept in the investor's family and passed down to future generations because they are long-term. Agriculture investments can appreciate eternally. 8. High demand for sustainable organic food. Consumers are increasingly seeking organic and fair trade items, such as coffee, chocolate, and quinoa according to the nonprofit advocacy group Impact Assets. As a result, large firms such as Starbucks, Nestle, Green Mountain Coffee, and Cargill are turning to small-scale producers for their raw materials. According to the association, large worldwide raw food companies are expected to source 100% of their palm oil by 2015 and all of their coffee by 2025. These forms of business promises according to Impact Assets, drive intermediaries and smallholders to meet demand for organic and fair trade products. Increased investment opportunities result from greater standards and stronger connections between buyers and growers. Africa has a significant potential to meet the world's demand for organic food as a result of this growth, as the continent's full agricultural potential has yet to be achieved. According to a recent study, Africa could produce up to three times more cereals and grains, or 20% more than the present global output of 2.6 billion tons of cereals and grains. Similar improvements in horticultural, crop, and livestock production could be seen if the continent's agricultural productivity improves. Agriculture is an appealing alternative for many investors because of the variety of ways to invest in it, as well as growing concerns about global food consumption. 9. Investment Opportunities in Agricultural Digitalization Digital technology has the potential to transform the food, agriculture, and fishery systems in the future decades. Mobile platforms, data analytics, high-resolution satellite imaging, precision equipment, and artificial intelligence could all assist increase industry productivity, resourcefulness, and sustainability. While some of these technologies are now in use, others are still in the works. Significant public and private investment in digital infrastructure, as well as education and training, will be required. These areas provide tremendous investment potential in Africa, with high returns on investment while also improving the lives of millions of people. 10. Investment Opportunities in Agricultural Education Agriculture occupations include some of the largest sectors and long-term employment opportunities in the world, employing millions of people. With Africa's vast and undeveloped agricultural potential, the educational sector presents a major investment opportunity, as these sectors require an increasing number of qualified specialists. Agricultural engineer, scientist, agricultural manager, agronomist botanist, forester horticulture, data analytics, and a range of other vocations are among the most popular in the agriculture and forestry industries, as they help to preserve and safeguard the environment. 
In most African countries, investment in educational institutions, such as private universities or vocational schools, requires only a few practicing licensing partners and investors. The next hurdle is hiring lecturers with highly relevant and marketable skills demanded by corporations in the agriculture sector. Also, moving more and more towards digital education, investments in physical structures can be limited, as most courses can be carried out online. So there you have it. Those were our 10 reasons why investment opportunities in agriculture will create more millionaires in Africa. Do you know about other reasons which were not on? Okay, so that should give you guys some insight as to why we chose the agricultural industry um, in Africa. So right before we get into these partnerships, I, I like to talk about this profit sharing philosophy that is uh, mainstream in Africa. So I'll read this here real fast. Our research has shown that greed plays a major role in the United States economic system. Greed is the reason that most classes of people tend to stay in that class for life. The rich tend to stay rich, while the poor and middle class tend to stay in their respective classes. Greed is the reason why this, is, why this will not change in most parts of the world. The man on top can't risk losing his status because of sharing. He must always keep the most for himself and share the least. What we have learned while partnering in Africa is that this mentality rarely exists in the agricultural sector. Let's look at the um, <clears throat> graphs and charts below, and you'll see the differences from Africa to the United States and um, how vast those differences are. So if you look at this chart, and these are just, um, these numbers are just put in to be nice round figures, not to be accurate, not accurate at all. It could be off by hundreds or even thousands of dollars, just as a sample. So John initially invested $800 into growing crops on this acre of land. John got with the landowner who invested nothing. He just used John's money. It took 100 to cultivate, 100 to seed, a couple hundred to maintain, harvest, package it up nicely, take it to where it needed to be taken to and sold, and $100 in taxes. Okay? Take notice how John has funded the entire grow project while the landowner has contributed zero cash. John's $800 contribution was enough to 100% fund the project from seed to sale. So this pie chart here, it just shows how that $800 was split up. What percent was used on what? Main, the main um, monies went towards the maintenance of the project. Okay. So that maximum gain mentality that we were talking about above, how greed plays a um, factor in all financial transactions in the US. Everyone has a maximum gain mentality. This is a capitalist nation. Everybody is about profits. So um, notice how John received what's considered to be a good return of 12% of his investment. So that $800. So that, that piece of land yielded $2,400 in sales that he spent the $800 on. So John was returned his $800, and John was very happy because he actually received 12% profit, which, which is um, double what he would have gotten in the stock market or in his 401k plan. Um, the landowner walked away with a whopping 1500 plus bucks. Uh, John got 96, but like I said, John was fairly happy because that was a 12% return. So the landowner profited 63% of the 2300 4% of the 2300 went to John, of the 2400 I'm sorry, went to John, which was a 12% profit. And um, John's cost was returned. That was 33% of the 2400 in sales. So notice how John funded the entire project and received what was perceived to be a good return. And you must remember that 12% is a good return here in the States. 
Okay, let's look at this same plot of land in Africa. It yielded the same amount of sales, $2,400. John was returned his $800, and it was $1,600 left, where then John and the landowner split the $1,600, $800,800. Look at that. So now the pie is more evenly split. You have John with a third, the left, sorry, the landowner with a third, and um, John was returned his money, which was the third. So um, notice how John received what is considered to be a fair return for his investment dollars. This says a lot about the value of your investment dollars on the continent of Africa versus North America. And what I like about this is that the African farmers, the African landowners, they, they look at splitting the cost as being fair. So that says a lot. If you think this is fair, that says to me that you are actually still open for um, negotiations because I could say, okay, you think it's fair, but I don't think it's fair. We Yeah, we split it 50-50, but I want 70, I want 30. I mean, we don't want to bring the Western mentality over there and start being greedy, but I'm just saying that to say that um, fair still leaves the whole table open for negotiations in my mind. If I'm wrong, I don't know, but that's what fair sounds like to me. Fair is um, only fair to the person who, who thinks that way. If I don't think it's fair, then we can turn around and negotiate. Okay, so let's look at these two um, charts. U.S., this is how much money John got. Africa, this is how much money John got. So look at the extreme differences in the two pie graphs from one country to the next. As stated above, the rich tend to stay rich while the poor and middle class tend to stay in their respective classes. Profit sharing is how Harmony Village 100 is able to partner with agricultural companies in Africa while simultaneously partnering with individuals around the globe and keep our commitments. So this is major because... People ask us, you know, well, how could you offer such returns like that? I've heard that so many times. You know, it sounds too good to be true. Well, if you're used to making 6%, 10%, 12%, if you don't know that opportunities exist out here for you to make 100%, then that's just something that you're lacking on your side. You don't know. I specifically had a conversation with a, a, a huge businessman <clears throat> when I was in Africa, and I told him that, you know, Deals like this just don't exist in the U.S. They just don't exist. And he went on to tell me that they absolutely do exist. I've seen tons of deals like this. But the problem is you won't ever see them, you know, because you guys have a capitalist society. If you put in $100 on something and it makes 1000 the guy that brought that opportunity to you is going to give you $12. That's your $112, your 12%. And you're going to be ecstatic about that. And the whole time, he's walked away with $888. So the opportunities absolutely do exist, but we don't have the opportunities to get involved in that type of stuff here because it's already spoken for. The market is saturated and it's over here. So we have to move to somewhere else that's going to give us the opportunity for success. Okay, so now let's get right into these partnerships. I'm sorry it took that long. <clears throat> But um, I think everything that we went over was necessary. So we will introduce our friends to new ways of realizing far better returns than what is ever possible in the Western world. With Harmony Village 100, we offer profit sharing, not just a basic 6% to 12% return. Our profit sharing strategy opens up the doors to a whole new world of possibilities. Okay, so... Like I said, we are um, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half years. That's it. If, if we can't get this thing done in, in a limited amount of time, get it done fast, then there's, there's no reason to do it because we are currently, maybe not in the future, but currently we are gearing this thing to friends and family, um, people our age. We're mid-40s to late 40s, so we don't have 30, 40 years to sit around trying to find some way to make our money work. Our time is limited, so we need to 
get it while we can. So let's talk about our 1.5 year partnership. We're calling it the accelerated partnership. Okay. And um, with this 18 month partnership, you would be totally satisfied with because this partnership gives you a 40% return in 18 months. A 40% return in 18 months. That's phenomenal. And if we're if we're talking about um, now the 40% was total return over 18 months. But if you break that down into APR, we like to talk about APR, annual percentage yield, is 30%. Okay? So um, the total return is 40%. Annual return is 30% for this first 1.5 year plan. So this has a $5,500 minimum contribution, as does all our plans, but none of them have any maximum contributions. So if you um, invest the minimum amount of $5,500, you will expect your money to increase by 40% over 18 months. So we'll just throw out some scenarios. If you put in $10,000, in 18 months, you'll get 14,000. If you put in 100,000, in 18 months, you'll get 140,000. And with this particular plan, it, um, it pays in two payments, as does all the plans. The um, first payment you will get after 12 months of 70% of your original investment. And six months after that, you will get an additional 70% of your original investment. So to break that down further, you invest 10,000. In 12 months, you get 7,000. Six months after that, 18 months, you'll get another 7,000 for a total of 14,000. You put in 100,000. In 12 months, you'll get 70,000. Additional six months, you'll get another 70,000 for a total of 140,000 in 18 months, which is a 40% return on your money. That is absolutely phenomenal. I can't, I can't stress that enough. That is a 30% APR. You don't get 30% anywhere. I'm sorry, you just don't. Okay, we'll move along to the um, 2.5 year partnership and we're calling this high performance. Really, we should have called the first one high performance because that's exactly what it is. But um, this here plan, you'll be absolutely ecstatic with. This is a 30-month partnership. Again, it's a $5,500 minimum with no max. And with this plan, your money will increase by 100% in 30 months. That is, in effect, doubling. So if you put in $10,000, and I keep using these same scenarios, they're nice and round and easily understandable. If you put in $10,000, in 24 months, which is two years, you'll get 10,000. Six months after that, which is two and a half years, you'll get an additional 10,000 for a total of 20,000, which is 100% return over the life of the plan. So just because it's 100% return over the life of the plan, we like to talk in APR again, it's annual percentage rate. That's 40% annual percentage rate, whereas the last plan was 30%. So, in a nutshell, if you put 10 G's in this um, plan, you'll get 10 G's out in 24 months, and you'll get your final $10,000 out after 30 months. Okay? Let's go to our last and final plan, which is just a doozy. And this is, this is going to surprise you guys. And again, you're going to ask, how can you guys do this? And I'll explain even further. So this is our three and a half year obligation plan. So with this option, there is a 42 month partnership and you will notice that I have these white asterisks here before the 42 months. That's a footnote and we'll go over that shortly. But with this partnership, same thing, minimum contribution of 5,500, no max you will get 175% of um, return on your investment after 42 months, which is 3.5 years. Okay, so how this one works is the same as the other ones. You'll get two payments 
The first one, you got your first payment after one year. That second plan, 2.5 years, you got your first payment after two years. This third one is a 3.5 year obligation with a 175% return on your money. So if you put $10,000 in, you will get after three years on to the date, you will get $17,500. So you will get $17,500 after three years and only six months later, you will get $10,000. So two payments, first payment, $17,500. The second payment is the same amount as your original investment. If you put $100,000 in after 36 months, you will get $175,000 back. Six months later, after 42 months, you will get your original investment of $100,000 back for a grand total of $275,000 off of a $100,000 um, contribution. And this is a one-time investment of $100,000 yields you $275,000. You, 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 can't, you can't find that anywhere. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know how, how to stress this anymore. I, I'm going to go into the asterisk now, and we're going to be wrapping up. We're going to do a Q&A here. But as for the asterisk, and I'm going to read this verbatim. We do not anticipate this 35-year partnership becoming unavailable. However, since the African agriculture market is rapidly growing and evolving, we can only fully guarantee the 2.5-year partnership. In the unlikely event that this 3.5-year partnership becomes unavailable before 30 months after your partnership date, you would then be downgraded to the total dividend amount provided in the 2.5-year partnership. You would then receive one dividend payment exactly 30 months from the partnership date in the amount of twice your original partnership contribution. So I'll explain that a little further. So the reason that we are downgrading, this is like a safeguard because we got these same um, stipulations from our partners in Africa. So basically, in a nutshell, if you subscribe to the 3.5 year partnership and say six months in it, they get a, a large contribution from an um, a overseas vendor or, or buyer, just as the one company that David um, invested in did. So an example, you get a three and a half year partnership, six months down the line, somebody gives them a hundred million dollars. They contact Harmony Village 100 and say, okay, we're no longer taking investors. So once your contract runs out, you're done. At that point, we cannot offer you a 3.5 um, year partnership because the resources just wouldn't be there. So what we would do at that point is downgrade your 3.5 year partnership to a 2.5 year partnership. So if you gave us, and this is, and keep in mind, this is only six months in. So if you gave us $10,000, they contact us in six months. We contact you when they contact us, tell you you've been downgraded to a 2.5 year plan. That is early enough for you to get the same two payments. So after 24 months, you would get 100,000. After 30 months, you would get another 100,000. So just say if they um, contact us 22 months in, the same things apply. You would get a $100,000 payment on the 24th month, another $100,000 on the 30th month. That's just a downgrade to the 2.5 year. So nobody is taking any loss because you're getting your money. You're not getting as much, but you're getting it early. So it's kind of the same thing. So let's say if you have this 3.5 year partnership and you make it to the 30th month, when you make it to the 30th month, the deal is closed. They're going to honor the 3.5 year because we're already into that plan. Only if you get this notice before that 30th month, will we have to downgrade you to the second plan? So um, we don't foresee this happening, but it's just a safeguard that we have to put in there in case we're slapped with this thing, then we won't have to try to 
figure out how we're going to get anybody's money. Uh, we don't play when it comes to people's uh, money because it's just too important. People have lives. People have retirements to um, see through. And it's that's just the facts. Okay, so <clears throat> those were the three plans. So what I did have time to do is I put together a spreadsheet. Let me pull it up. And what this spreadsheet will do, it will... It's simulator, so it will give you different scenarios. So I have a tab here for 1.5 year, 2.5 year, 3.5 year. So you can kind of play around with these things. You can put whatever number you want in here, $5,500. Enter. If you invest $5,500 on a three-year plan, you'll leave with $15,125 which is a um, profit of $9,600. That's phenomenal. And, and the only, how you really take advantage of this is if you, the more you put in, obviously, the better off you are. So we'll put 100,000 here. 100,000, you'll have $275,000 after 3.5 years, 42 months. I mean, that's phenomenal. Even this 2.5 year, we already know what that is. That's double. If you put 5,500 in, you'll have 11,000 in two years. So the least lucrative, but it's um, still phenomenal, is the 1.5 year. 1.5 year, if you put $5,500 in, you'll receive $7,700 in. I mean, out 18 months later, just a short year and a half later. So we can play around with these... Um, with these scenarios, if someone is thinking of putting in 25,000 for three and a half years, you'll be returned $68,750 for a profit of um, $47,750. So I just can't say enough good things about this program. I'm talking, there's there. this is unprecedented. This is um, first to market, guaranteed, definitely first to market. And I'll, I want to elaborate a little bit more. I don't think I um, told you two more things. So the first thing, the products that we're investing in, they're sold. Once they're um, grown, harvested, and packaged, they're already sold. They have buyers standing there waiting to buy products, 100% of it. As a matter of fact, with our honey, the honey is so in demand that um, the company that we're investing with had a um, a buyer from Dubai contact them and say they want 100% of the honey. How much you can produce, we want it. So um, they had to turn that down. They told them, hey, we got a local market to supply here. We can't give you 100%. We can give you 85%. And the company went on to say, give us the 85%. Plus, whatever else you make, we want it all. So this is how in-demand chili peppers are. This is how in-demand garlic is. And this is how in-demand honey is. We have done our research, and this is the reason why we are committed to this thing, and we're dumping all of our resources into it. It's the, it's the next wave. As you've seen, it's going to produce more millionaires in the short term than any other... Um, investment vehicle out. And the last thing I want to elaborate on is the insurance. So we talked briefly, we touched briefly on the uh, insurance end. I didn't even know this was a thing and I have not done such research, research in the States to know if um, insurance on agricultural investments is a thing here. I'm not sure. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it definitely is in Africa. So obviously there is volcanoes and things like that in Africa. So what this insurance does, it, it protects you against any calamities that um, may threaten your profits. It does not protect against war, riots, or floods. So if the locusts come eat your crops, you still get 90% return. That's another thing. It's not 100, but it's 90%. But realistically, if something comes and damages your crop, 
normally it doesn't damage it at all. It's like I said, it's not protected from war riots or floods, but floods are generally not um, something that we're worried about. We're mostly worried about getting water to our crops. We need more water every season. It's rare that we're worried about floods. So um, locusts eat your crops, you get paid for it. Volcanic, volcano happens, we still get our money. Um, seismic activity, we still get our money. So um, agriculture in itself already does not fluctuate like the stock market. It stays steady. And with the, with the steadiness of the market, coupled with the insurance policies that's offered, um, I don't see um, I don't see any way to go wrong here. And and lastly, I know I said the insurance was last, but lastly, I had someone when I went up here to take a break, I had somebody ask me, "How do we get paid?" So the way we get paid, we are incentivized. I don't want to say we aren't. That's not the driving force. We are incentivized to pull you guys in as investors because all of these companies want to get a foothold in the American market. None of them have a foothold in them. And when I say a foothold in the American market, I'm not talking so much as um, in regards to exporting things to America. I'm more so talking about investors. They want to get investors from America so they can grow their operations. That's their main thing. If they can get the American dollars behind them, then they can go far. So um, <clears throat> that is... um. That is what's driving them to incentivize us. And the incentives that they give us are not significant. Trust me, we're doing this because this is something we wanted to bring home to the people so they can benefit from like we're doing. And as I talked about the insurance, we are using the incentive funds that they're giving us to provide the insurance. So all of the incentives that they give us to attract you guys um, to the motherland, we spend that back out on insurance because first off, Dave and I, we have a sterling reputation for excellence. We do not play games when it comes down to any money. We um, pride ourselves on what we do. We have organically grown the reputations that we have, as many of you here know us. From growing up as kids, if we say something, we do it. We, we do not circumvent. We don't talk around the back bush, beat around the bush. It is what it is. When we tell you something, we deliver. We commit. That's our promise to you. So that's why we took the extra step to take the incentive money that we're giving and give it right back to the insurance company so we can ensure that what we're telling you is going to come to fruition and, and we'll um, <clears throat> all be able to grow together. So what we'll do, I'll turn up the lights here and we'll have a Q&A, get some questions out for you guys so we can get you out of here. <clears throat> 